Hi, we're going to talk about frequency distribution and graphs. So let's begin with this example. I have you ask his classmates how old they were when they got their first smartphones. They give you the responses. So what we're going to do is organize that into a frequency distribution table. So we have age, number of friends. These are the ages. They only range from 6 to 12. So let's see how many friends uh, got it at when they were six. Let's see, there's one, there's two. So that will be two, right? There's nowhere else. Let's make sure we don't miss anything. So two. How many got them when they were seven? Here's one, and that's it. Eight. There's one. Okay. Nine. Here's one, here's two, here is three. So we got three. Ten. Here's one, two, three, four, five. Five. Eleven. There's one, two. And twelve. There was one. Okay. That's it. 20 college students were asked how many hours per week they spend studying. Below the results, we want to construct a frequency distribution, so we're going to do the same thing. Let's begin with the finding one. Here's one. Two. Here's one. Two. Two. Three. One. Two. Also two. Four. There's one, two, three, five. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. And one, two, three, four, seven. We have uh, one and two. And eight, we got one. Now, one thing that I always recommend that you do is you want to make sure that you add all these numbers together because that needs to add up to 20, right? Because that's what we had in the beginning. So one plus two plus two plus three plus five plus four plus two plus one gives us 20. So everything, we have reason to think everything's good. All right. Sometimes, uh, Making frequency distribution by individual values is not going to be effective. You may have values spread out quite a bit, and uh, values some of the values may be uh, not there. And uh, for that, we use what's called group frequency distribution. So, Professor Lopez's students took a midterm below the grades. That would be a very good example because our grades range from 55 to 96, I believe. And it's difficult to uh, plot it all. First of all, it's a lot of numbers and not everything's there. For example, you have 55, 56, but you don't have 57 or 58 or 59. And uh, uh, then you're not going to have a very good looking and very large, but not very good looking uh, frequency distribution. So what we normally do with things like this, we create a, a sort of class width. Class width would be an appropriate value that we're going to group them by, um, you know, chunks of numbers. So here we'd probably say going by class width of 10 is going to be appropriate because we're going to have, uh, you know, uh, organized from 50 to 59, 60 to 69, 70 to 79, that would be in groups of 10. So our intervals, as I already mentioned, would go from 50 to 59, then we're going to go from 60 to 69, 70 to 79, 80 to 89, and then 90 to 99. And this way we can only use five groups and that's going to give us uh, a way to organize that in a lot better format. Uh, for each interval that we have here we have what's called the lower class limit and the upper class limit. So for 50 to 59, 50 would be the lower class limit and 59 is the upper class limit. Right? So 
Let's start filling it in this table. 50 to 59, 60 to 69, 70 to 79, 80 to 89, and then we're going to have 90 through 99. When you do something like that, it's easier to tally that because there's a lot of numbers and they are spread out all over the place. So the easiest thing to do is start from the beginning, start telling them, telling them in the appropriate the group and then once you get it all done then you can go ahead and uh, do it but first thing that we need to do let's find out how many numbers we have so we can check our total 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 so we have a total of 22 values that we're supposed to have everything add up to and let's go ahead and start so 56 75 90, 78, 68, 96, 87, 79, 55 and 60, 63, 91, 94, 86, 77, 82, 73, 86, 71, 94, 70, 72. Okay. So what do we have total? Two here, three here, eight here, four here, and five here. Does it all add up to 22? Let's check, because we always want to make sure. 2 plus 3 plus 8 plus 4 plus 5 gives us 22. Perfect. Now, this was a little bit more obvious. What do you do with uh, situations when things are not as logical? So we have tomato grower who weighed several of Roma tomatoes he grew, and these are the weights that he recorded it. So we have total 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 15 numbers, right? Uh, we don't have a logical breakdown like we did with grades, so we need to figure out how we want to do it. Sometimes there is a preference, sometimes there is another reason. Why don't we organize them? Well, so we're going from the lowest value here of 57, right? So our lowest value is 57 and our highest value is 71. So 57, 71 minus 57 gives us 14. So if we change it to 15, then we can, because you know 14 is not necessarily the number we're going to go by. So 15, and if we decide to divide it into intervals of 3, then 15 divided by 3 is going to give us 5 intervals. Okay, and uh, that's what we're going to go by. So how are we going to uh, organize our intervals? We're going to go from 57, 50, I'm sorry, 57, 58, 59. And we're going to go from 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71. Look, it worked out perfect. So let's tell in them. 62, 58, so 62, 58, 57, 62, 57, 62, 65, 70, 71, 64, 57, 68, 59, 60, 61, 62, 64. Okay, and now we have our totals, which is 4, 5, 3, and then 1, and 2. And there is our frequency distribution. Okay. 
Now another thing that we can do is uh, we can do something that's called a histogram. A histogram is a visual way of organizing that it basically shows uh, uh, like bars. So this is the table that we already had done before, frequency distribution from example 2. We can construct a histogram. So what we do when we construct a histogram, we're going to go like that and like that. So horizontally we're going to go with our values and vertically we're going to go with frequencies. So our values will be so we're going to go from 1 to 8. So this is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. And then we're going to go ahead and look at the number of students and we're going to make our bars that are going to be based on that frequency. So for 1, we have 1. So we're going to go 1 high. For 2 we have 2, so we're going to go 2 high. For 3 we have 2 also. For 4 we have 3. For 5 we have 5. For 6 we have 4. For 7 we have 2. And for 8 we have 1. And there uh, is our histogram. Okay. We can do it with uh, grouped frequency distributions and do the same thing. So let's go ahead and do that. So here we're going to go with, let me see, I got one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so we're going to go like this. So this is going to be 50, this is going to be 60, and 70, and 80, and 90, and 100. I know we technically don't have 100, but we can still use that as our value to make our graph look very nice. So here we're going to have two. Let's go like this. It's, yeah, so two. From 60 to 69, we have three. From 70 to 79, we have eight. From 80 to 89, we have four. From 90 to 99, we have five. And there's that one. Now we're going to use a histogram from example 5 to construct what's called a frequency polygon. So let me copy that histogram first and then I'm going to show you how we create a frequency polygon. So I'm going to do the same thing here. It's actually a very easy thing to do but you do need to have a frequency you need to have a histogram to be able to create a frequency polygon. All right, so what we had here was, let me prepare this first. So this was one, this was two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And we're going to do the same thing here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. All right. Our histogram look like this so to, to create a frequency polygon instead of creating bars we're just gonna go with the height of each so we're gonna go here and then we're gonna go to two here and we're going to go to 2 here, and then we're going to go to 3 here, and then we're going to go to 5, and then 4, and then, oops, hold on, right here, here, and then 2, and then 1. And you just connect them. Okay. 
Okay. So you have it basically looks like a graph that you sometimes see that represents some kind of data. Okay. And one last thing we need to talk about is something called stem and leaf plot. So stem and leaf plot is another way to organize uh, data um, that provides you a combination of both frequency distribution along with the numerical data. Because let me show you one thing really quick for uh, Professor Lopez's grades. When you create frequency distribution, which was right here, so once we see that and we don't have these data anymore, we just know that in this group we have two students whose grades were in, in that range and then three students here and eight, but we don't know exactly what they are. Okay, so stem and leaf plot is going to allow you to see that as well as a very neat way to organize everything. So what are we going to do? We're going to have a table like that. This is going to be our stem. This is going to be our leaf. So here we're going to put our base values, which is going to be 5 and 6 and 7 and 8 and 9. Okay, and over here we're going to uh, start writing the other side of the numbers. The only challenge here is that we need to have them in numerical order. So let's see, where well, we have our lowest values, 55, so 55. And then we also have 56, so we're going to put 6 here. I'll explain what that means in a moment. How about 60s? So what do we have here? We have 60 as our lowest value. We have 63 and that's it, right? This supposed to have one more value in the 60s range. So we have 60, 63 and, and 68. Seventies. We're supposed to have eight numbers. Seventy-five, seventy-eight, seventy-nine. What's the lowest? We have seventy. Okay, we have seventy. We have seventy-one. We have seventy-two. We have. Let's see. That's one, two, three. So we're supposed to have five more values. Seventy-five, eight, seven, three. Oh, we have seventy-three. 75, 77, 78, and 79. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay. Okay. 80s. We're supposed to have four numbers. So let's see, we have 87. 86, 82, 86. So we got 82 as our lowest value. 86, 86 again. Yes, we're going to have to write it twice. And then 87. In the 90s, we're supposed to have five numbers. So we have 90. 96 is 91. So 96, 94, 94. So 94, 94. And 96. Okay, and we got them all. So, what's the benefit here? That you can see the numbers, you can also see how many numbers are going to be in this range. Like in the 70s, you see you have more numbers in the 70s range than anywhere else, right? And you have a very few in the 50s range. So, it provides you kind of like a combination of a frequency distribution along with the histogram. Okay. There's one thing that is missing though. We always have to have an explanation, the key, for our stem and leaf plot because just writing it like that is not going to be enough. We often write things like this, like 5 bar 4 is 54 because in some cases when you create stem and leaf plot, two numbers written like this on opposite sides of the bar may not represent 54. In some cases, may, it may represent 5,400 or something else. So you always have to make sure you include the key for your stem and leaf plot. But that's for another video to get into more details with that. Okay, so I hope this was helpful.